All right, we're going. We're live. Hello. Hello. Starting. Oh, hi, oh, are, are we starting? starting? Starting. Yep. Now we're yeah. on. Hi, <laughs> yes. hi, people. Um, why don't you introduce yourselves in case they don't know? Yeah. Uh, I'm Alejandra Simmons. I play Alex. I'm Gwendolyn Common, your neighborhood friendly Dorothy. <laughs> I'm Linnea Curry Roberts. Connie. Um, so there, there's going to be a delay, so they might uh, be a little slow with questions. Um, but we got some beforehand, so I figured I would maybe ask you that. We'll yeah. For their stream to catch up. Cool. Uh, so let's see. Um, if you could have any job in the world for a day, what would it be? Sand sculptor. Cool. <sighs> I need a moment. Okay. That's a really hard one. Sorry. I feel like there's so many <laughs> jobs in the world that I don't even know <laughs> exist. I'd, I'd want to be uh, someone that needed to do deep sea diving. A deep sea diver. Like, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, you could work for like the military. You could work for like a marine biologist. I don't know. But yeah, a deep sea diver, mm-hmm. I guess, <laughs> is just what it comes down to. Thank you. Um, that reminds me, I used to want to be a marine biologist. When I was a kid, because I really loved whales. Everyone wanted to be a marine biologist when they were Okay, kids. well, excuse me. I didn't want to be a marine biologist. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we have a beach theme going on, though. We do. Oh, we yeah. all want to ha- just hang out on the beach. Like, when I'm we really... were, like, sand sculptures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the weirdest thing you've ever had to do as an actor from a fan in New Zealand? Oh, I thought you were saying, like, what did a fan in New Zealand make you do? <laughs> um, I had to walk uh, barefoot through a graveyard at night. Hmm. Creepy. Yeah. Uh, I remember kind of on the death theme. Um, my character had died, but she'd been killed in a, or on a waterbed. So I had to, for all the death shots, just be a, a still dead body in a half deflated um, waterbed and it was like hang, trying to be still in a cool bath. It was terrible and weird. Um, I think staying on the morbid dark theme <laughs> <laughs> I was in this short film once and I killed seven different people seven different ways. Uh, and I think the weirdest one was, is this supposed to be PG? I just <laughs> realized. I just, <laughs> well, I slid her belly open and I pulled out her unborn fetus. Ooh. And then I pushed her body into a grave full of cigarettes. Mm. Mm. Um, you casual. should be able to be seeing their comments, too, if there's any that you want to respond to. The waterbed thing. Beachiest yeah. song. Beachiest <laughs> song. Okay. Beachiest song. Oh, God. Oh, um, <clears throat> oh, never mind, I don't remember. I don't know. Worst <laughs> place you've had sex. Wow, Iris, just going for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, we've had a slash question. <laughs> Beaches is from a mixed team. Honestly, I don't know, but the song that's been stuck in my head lately is Yoga by Janelle Monet. I don't know if that's oh. beachy. Okay. Um, yeah. It's okay, Iris. It's okay. We love you for it. <laughs> Hi, Madison. <laughs> now I'm just thinking about Beach House. Anything by Beach House. Yes, Beach House. Totally. Mm-hmm. I just thought of that song. Is it called Billionaire that came out a long time ago? <laughs> it just popped into my head. Billionaire. Billionaire. Yes. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> um, okay, favorite book. Oh, I can do that. Anything by Roald Dahl. That's more of a favorite author, I guess. But. Um, I loved Philip Pullman and the, um, all his, the, the three books that he wrote, that series. The Golden Compass? The Golden Compass, oh. yeah. Oh. Couldn't get through those. Is that what it's called? Because then I got confused, and then I was thinking oh, no, of that series. Because yeah, it's not the Mortal Instruments, it's something else, because Mortal Instruments yeah. is like not what I'm talking about at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously all Harry Potter <gasps> yeah, given. <laughs> My favorite show right now, though, I just discovered Unreal. 
Oh my god. <sighs> I can't <Why> stop. <laughs> I can't stop. It's not even that good, but it's so good. <laughs> oh, what is, is that the one about the like fake dating show? It's yeah. So it's like oh, I it's a TV show about like the bil- behind the scenes sort of, of like, like a bachelor. Are we talking about show. this? The last Angie time. told me about it. Okay, yeah, that's right. And then I actually started watching it about a week ago. It's so upsetting. My friend, we were just like having a fun hang, and she's like, you should watch a show. And I thought it was just going to be like a goofy show. So I was like, this is going to be a silly show. And it's just so heartbreaking. And it, it ended, is. and I'm like, I have to go. Like, I can't stay <laughs> here. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. You're literally naming my favorite. I thought it was yeah. Uh, this is from Ellie Moore. What do you admire most about each other's characters? <laughs> Everyone has great hair. It's um, <laughs> always hair with you. It's a big deal. Um, I mean, Connie's sweetness. Um, I feel like Alex is is just really smart, and that's intimidating in a good way. There you go. I feel like um, Dorothy's loyalty, her unwavering loyalty, I think is really um, powerful and admirable, and um, Connie's patience. Man, I wish I had that kind of patience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have it in real life. Um, yeah, I was going to say the same thing about Dorothy. Just like, fiercely loyal. Um, and I think for Alex, I really like how sensible she is. Uh, because I think that's something that's missing from a lot of people. Is actually looking at a situation and seeing maybe it's not a good idea to go punch people. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is from at Trash Lord Men. What was everyone's favorite moment in the series and backstage? Um, backstage, it was really fun in the episodes where we were on missions. So where Portia or Alex was kind of like hosting them um, and running HQ. The rest of us just got to stand uh, and read lines into a microphone. And it was really fun. That's all. <laughs> uh, for the scenes where I only came out at the very end, I still had to be waiting, obviously, because we wouldn't cut. So I'd just be like in the room off to the side. And so I would just like lie down and <laughs> pretend to be sleeping. But then I'd like have to get up and be really quiet, like trying to like tiptoe across the room. Um, so that was kind of fun. Favorite scene to film? Well, it's, uh, yeah, favorite moment in the series. In the series. In the series and off. Um, <clears throat> Dorney finally happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. That mm-hmm. was in response to, oh, you liked to happen in series two? Oh. Oh, no. That oh, was just, what like, actually happened in the series. <laughs> 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 I mean, like, Dorney Dorney, when of, Dorney finally but... happened. Yeah. And the internet was blessed with the gif of Dorney smooches everywhere. <laughs> Portiana or Dorney? Can't we do both? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'd like to see in season two is Portiana making a comeback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. There was the working the live episode was really fun behind the scenes. Um, rehearsing for that was like just a blast. Um, we got to do it for so long and reconnecting with the team. I think favorite moment in the series. Um, I think the face off in the sorority when we were like facing down the bros. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I think fun. that was a great mm-hmm. moment yeah. mm-hmm. of like all the ladies and then Dan and then his <laughs> bro minions. It was fun to be in the other space too. Yeah, just, yeah it, it was, was really a cool. really gorgeous mm-hmm. yeah. house. Yeah, house and the set design was amazing. It was super fun to, to play in that space. Yeah. Weapon wise, and see, I think yes. I just want um, in season two to have like an actual choreographed fight. There do- doesn't have to be weapons. Fist fight. I want it. 
Um, selfie stick. <laughs> Ooh, I had a lot of fun that day because Alex is really not very good at taking selfies. So it was like, um, the, I was just like, okay, how badly can I take this picture? <laughs> and like, I'm not really a selfie master anyway. So it was like really easy to just take really <laughs> bad angles and to laugh about it. So it was super fun. <laughs> It also didn't work, did it? No, it didn't work. So the whole yeah. problem was I had to, to like press the button anyway <laughs> because like that wasn't even me like pretending to be like incompetent. It was it didn't work. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay, Iris Maxfield is talking about how uh, they're a pacifist, and it makes me think. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a free love kind of person, aren't you? <laughs> I really feel like Iris is really cool. I like Iris is pretty the cool. They have to add to this conversation. Yeah, you like Iris. Hmm. Um, we have here a favorite costume piece or prop. I don't know why I'm looking over here. <laughs> what about Dave? Yeah, in the over there Cindy will tell we you. We just have all the props. So <laughs> hanging out. Um, um, foam sword. Favorite outfit? I got to wear a, a uh, overalls once. That was my favorite. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say the Nerf guns, too. Everything else was, was pretty, like, regular, but I don't... Yeah, I don't think I ever used a Nerf gun before that day. I hadn't, and, then, and I like yeah. really liked it, but I also had a really hard time reloading, and I was just <laughs> feeling really embarrassed because I like wanted to look really cool, but I'm like fumbling with the foam bullets. <laughs> How is it hiding behind the couch? Um, yeah. Somebody asked me this on Twitter as well, and um, the the floor was pretty hard. <laughs> I had to lie in a way that like none of my knees were sticking out and it was like not super comfortable but what I what I told the person on Twitter was that um, I was doing a play contract at the time and in the play I played a character who was dead um, so for about 15 minutes of the play I was lying dead in the sand so it was actually really regular I was quite used to lying there and not falling asleep and just listening to what was happening and it's always interesting to just listen to the conversation and what can you learn from characters when you're just listening to them as opposed to relying on visuals as well hey what Hogwarts house are you in I don't know <laughs> there's debate about it I'm oh. upset about it all no but not you as a no, character no. they're asking you, you as a no person. I know there's still debate <laughs> about who's it who's debating well, wait a lot of my friends think Ravenclaw. I think Gryffindor. But, I mean, neither are bad. Neither are bad. I just want to know. Why don't you just take the test? I think I did, and I forget. But you can, <laughs> do, <laughs> what, yeah, what, you can do what Harry did, and, and maybe choose. you could be between the two of them, and you get to choose. I do get to choose. I mean, they're you both great. They're all great. We know good people come out of all the houses. It's yeah. not up for debate. Even mm -hmm. Slytherin. I don't know who I'm pointing to. I... <laughs> <sighs> Do you know what house you're in? Um, I think, I think I'm in Gryffindor, but I honestly don't know. I don't. I I feel like all the houses are wonderful. Yeah. I think it'd be really cool to be a Slytherin. Yeah. I think my alter ego is a Slytherin. I am a Slytherin. You're of course you're a Slytherin. And I, guys, when I like, I joined Pottermore right away as soon as it came yeah, out, of however many years ago, I took the the quiz or whatever, and I was actually devastated. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Gwen is um, just like... <laughs> I've come to own it now, but it was a, it was a journey. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I am upset that it isn't set in stone. <laughs> <laughs> what are your fave characters? Have yours changed since the dorm? Characters... I think they mean an April, probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they've changed because I don't remember who I <laughs> said. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> I know in one of the behind the scenes mm -hmm. things I said Portia. I think it constantly changes, which mm -hmm. I guess is the question. Um, who would it be right now? Rochefort is my favorite. Right. Favorite. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was rewatching some of the behind the scenes and I was like, damn, 
I wish he was in the show more. He's yeah. just so yeah, funny. He's so funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's just very funny. He's so great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, oh, Iris. Just, please. <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> um, uh, I think John and Alex are really different. So it's really cool to play characters and have the opportunity to work with guys, uh, with, with these guys, with the Cherrydale folks on such diverse projects because Joan in the March Family Letters, for those of you who don't know, um, which is the web series that um, Cherry Dale produced about um, the three um, little women. I was going to say three sisters. I mean, there's four. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> just stop talking. <laughs> but um, Joan is this really free-spirited um, uh, student who falls in love with Meg March and becomes... Uh, her partner and I think that it's great to see it was great to be able to play um, a character who was so kind of open and really generous and loving uh, and supportive and to play a character who felt the same way but couldn't express it so really pushed a lot of it down and the way that she showed her love for her friends was by trying to like kind of control them in a way and take care of them in a way that was more mom-like than than Joan was so it's cool to be able to have a chance to play characters that are so that have the same heart but express it in totally different ways which is just like we are as people uh Linnea they want to know which Lord of the Rings character you are most like I saw that one and I think it's pretty obvious but (laughs) oh who is it you have a Frodo face if I've ever seen (laughs) (laughs) I don't know I was totally gonna say Arwen but (laughs) you're like I mean I did dress as Arwen for (laughs) Halloween not gonna lie um I feel like my boyfriend won't like the Frodo comment because he gets told he looks like Frodo all the time as do like all of his brothers so I mean I would not be upset uh I love Frodo maybe I'm saying you have um, an Elijah Wood face. Which is, is also strange because like, I've like loved Elijah Wood for so long. Um, bright blue eyes, dark hair. Yeah, I mean, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Same. Um, Does Arwen also have bright blue eyes? She, yeah, I think so. I think they're gray. They're more gray. Are they? Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but darker hair, pale yeah. yeah. feature. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, like, I really like eating as much as possible so I could be Mary or Pippin eating yes. several breakfasts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're like pretty like loyal, care about their friends. Okay, they're all good. I mean I just be legolas, just a bit clumsy with the bow. Uh, thanks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> it's your flowing blonde locks. <laughs> 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 and how you're always staring off into the distance saying strange things. Yeah, I, I hear that. Come. I mean, I don't think it would work, though, because I agree. I probably would. Although, actually, I went to Archery Tag the other day, guys, oh. and I, like, I was pretty good. Oh, that's um, fun. But I feel like it would be hard to be a go. clumsy Legolas, because I think that Legolas would kind is of go against. clumsy. Yeah. 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 I'm okay with like most of them. Clumsy cousin. Yeah, I could be. As long as I'm not an orc, guys. It takes nine hours of makeup, so. Uh, someone wants to know what your favorite thing about working together is. Nothing. Yeah, we hate each other. It's not that um, just working together. I mean, we're just all so lovely so, people. Yeah. yeah, this is such a lovely cast and crew to work with. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you go on and you do your job, and um, everybody's like, you kind of stick to your position, and there's no blending together. But I feel like this cast and crew really was like a family. It was very much a family dynamic, and everyone was really supportive and yeah. there for each other. And yeah, and we don't even have to lie about it. It's just true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Really great. <laughs> yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chelsea Pilkington says, Alex is the mom on the show, but who's the mom on set? Didn't we get this question? <sighs> Malik. <laughs> She's the tough love mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our makeup artist. Yeah. Our makeup artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was <laughs> like, her and Amanda, Amanda Wong, our uh, costume designer, they really took care of us. Mm-hmm. And Lauren. And it's like the head honcho <laughs> mama. Like her She's the big there. mama. Yeah. <laughs> she takes care of all of us, yeah. always. Mm-hmm. 
lot of weapon <clears throat> questions. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, so okay. Oh, I saw the one. Uh, what was your favorite part of the live episode? Drinking cocktails in my living room while watching. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm. Um, improvising with the with the questions that were sent in was uh, very stressful, but ended up being really fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I think like. Oh my god, there was it was all so much fun. That was such a fun day, but I'm like torn between playing drunk Alex with Portia because. Claire wasn't there for the rehearsals, so she didn't know what to expect. And then I was kind of just like throwing myself on her, and she was a really wonderful scene partner and, <laughs> and really took it in stride. So that was super fun. Tied one with the clambering over chairs and furniture without flashing anyone, <laughs> <laughs> or as few people as possible. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that said who's the fishiest in the group. <laughs> <I'm> like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> the fishiest, I think. <laughs> <laughs> fistiest. fistiest. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like as in fighting us. fistiest? Yeah. Chelsea, I think you have more in common with Iris than you know. <laughs> 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 um, There are five episodes out of a web series. It's also on Kana TV. It's called Lenny. It's an homage to K dramas, which I didn't know existed before I found out they existed, and they're amazing. And the show is really fun and the most adorable thing I've ever seen. So, check it out. That was a great plug. Yes. <laughs> um, I just I mentioned it a couple times in different interviews and it's on my social media, but I just did a short film with the director of All For One, Shannon Lit, called Follow Me. So I'm actually going to go over to her house next week to watch some of the rough cut and see how things are coming together and learn about more of the editing process with her. Um, and then I'm just like shooting a couple of short films this summer. But nothing you could tune into on Kaya TV like <laughs> Lenny starring Gwendolyn Cohen. <laughs> you go back and rewatch all this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't seen March Family Letters, plug for Cherrydale. It's really mm -hmm. sweet and endearing portrayal <laughs> of these sisters, and I happen to be in it. <clears throat> um, I don't have anything coming up. I mean, hopefully I will soon. Um, but a couple short films that I did um, over the past few years, I think, are sort of submitting to festivals and stuff, so hopefully they'll get in and be available for viewing at some point. So I'll post about that when it happens. Stay tuned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if you could pick a show A4O would cross over with, which one would you pick and why? Unreal. <laughs> oh my god, everyone just so awful to each other. No, it would be the worst. <laughs> like a web series show or like in my fantasy show? I think anything. anything because in my fantasy, it would be 19 too, and then Alex would have a relationship with the cop who's really hot. 19? And then. Is that the but that's cop not even like. It's Montreal? the cop show shot in Montreal. Right. Which, which cop? Um, I don't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> they're, I mean, they're both really pretty. I mean, really, I'll take either of them. I mean, Alex just wants to not be single anymore. <laughs> like, Alex. Alex doesn't want to be single anymore. <laughs> Okay, web series crossover though. High Maintenance is my favorite web series ever. What's and it about? Uh, it's about um, it's about a, a weed dealer in Brooklyn who uh, Oh my god, yes. Every That'd episode cool. is yeah. just he he's sometimes barely in them. It's about the people who are who are buying the weed from him and their story. And sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're touching. Um, it has nothing to do with all for one. Um, <laughs> it's not math. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> 
I'd, I'd yeah. throw them in like Brooklyn Nine Nine or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's a Brooklyn s- theme. Um, solve the case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> web series. I mean, like, it'd be like super bomb if obviously Carmilla and All for One crossed over. Cool. Who knows? Maybe in like, maybe that'll be its own web series and they stay like two alternate worlds and then they collide at one point. Do you think someone on All for One is secretly a vampire? Yeah, who's most likely to be secretly a vampire? Ooh. I mean, Connie's awfully nocturnal. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Connie. <gasps> no, it's Monty. Yeah. And Connie's been trying to keep Monty away from us for her own safety. Yeah, Connie's been trying and to protect Monty us. And then Monty walks in and she's really Carmilla. Okay, wow. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> That'd be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Congratulations hey, on coming Chloe, to your congratulations. Parents. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> the vampire. Uh, I guess that's the obvious one. But <laughs> 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 These are great questions. Plot twist. Trudy <laughs> the vampire. Yes. <laughs> I like this. What are your favorite puns? Oh my god, I'm terrible at puns. I'm really bad at puns, and I wish I was really good. Yeah, I just can't. I don't want to talk about it. Boom. (laughs) (laughs) Lauren's so disappointed. (laughs) Uh, You had to do long distance in the show, but any advice for real life? For long distance? Don't do it. Um, (laughs) Sorry. Uh... I always, I've, I don't think I've ever done long distance for a long period of time. It seems like an achievable thing to do if there's like a light at the end of the tunnel where yes. you will be in the same city at some point and you know when that's going to happen. Yeah, I did it when we were like, we're never going to be in the same city ever again. <laughs> Didn't work out, guys. <laughs> My really good friend is in a long distance relationship and her partner is working off the oil fields in Scotland and she lives in Vancouver. So they've been really it's like I'd all about communication. I watch yeah. I'll tell her that. Okay. <laughs> but it's all about I think the yeah. the base of any relationship is communication. If you can keep that open and flowing then Yeah. That's what's gonna keep your relationship alive and then you just communicate about whether this long distance is working and they see each other every few months as much as they can. But you know, you do you. Everybody's different. I found it's fun sometimes to, like, watch things together, like, turn on a TV show at the same time and, like, get off the phone and then talk about it after. Um, yeah. It's a fun thing. Mm-hmm. There's a really cool web series. Oh, what's it called? 7P10E, I think it's called. And it's about um, uh, someone in... New York and someone in LA um, and you someone sets them up on a blind Skype date and then the next 30 episodes they make this commitment to each other uh, that seems ridiculous at the time They're like we're gonna talk to each other for the next month every day just for a bit doesn't have to be long but we will check in every single day um, and and it's a every episode is is one of those Skype dates anyway it's cute it's super cute that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we should do our giveaway. <gasps> Ooh. Okay, so we're giving away a t-shirt. And... Can we describe the t-shirt? Uh, we don't have it on us, I but... Do. <laughs> our invisible t-shirt. Invisible t-shirt. Right here. Um, um, has the MST, MST logo. Has the MST logo. What color is it? White, I think. It's white, we think. <laughs> it's white with the logo, right? Because we had some of those shirts on set. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, a Dorothy Moore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once you got to the sorority. Um, so how are we going to give it away? We're going to ask a trivia question and then the, what first is, person. the first person who gets the right answer gets a t-shirt. Yeah. Um, so what question are we going to ask guys? Oh, are we making it up? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, I wasn't, I yeah. wasn't in the room. The first person who can name five inseparables gets a t-shirt. Go. <laughs> Okay, great. So, while you're answering that question, throw us another bone, team. Um, Someone asked, if you could time travel, would you go forward or backward in time? I always think about going backwards, but maybe going forward would make more sense. Mm. 
I have always loved history and, and used to daydream about it. So I had like my list of all the different periods I wanted to live in. But I would definitely go back as a man be, or like a queen because I don't want to be oppressed and deal with like <laughs> not having rights as a woman. Oh, yeah. I think somebody... Did someone get it? Five, one, two, three. three, four, three. Worst, two, three. Sarah, I think, I'm going to leave that to you. I think... You tell us who You won. tell yeah. us. <laughs> I think it's Ellie Moore. Ellie Moore was the first one. Ellie Moore! Ellie Moore! Yay! Yay! <laughs> good job, everybody. Yeah, yeah congratulations, good. everybody. You all, yeah. you all know your inseparable knowledge. Uh, I go um, back in time. You go back in time. <laughs> yeah. Just Where wanted to. To when? Yeah. Um... Yeah. I don't no, know. I'm not sure. I think there's a lot of cool times that you could go back to but I wouldn't like going into the future um, because you don't you'd see stuff and then you have no control over it whereas in the past you already know what's happened and you know you have no control over it where I think if you saw the future and didn't like it too bad for you too bad (laughs) so you know what you're going to experience good or bad in the past can't buy t-shirts yet. Can't buy t-shirts. No, I was just going to ask, how can I get a t-shirt? <laughs> Keep your eye on Cherry Gale for future possibilities. Just steal <laughs> it from Cherry, set yeah. when you're wearing it next time. Stay tuned to Cherry Dale website and Tumblr for more information on whereabouts you can get these t-shirts. <laughs> or travel into the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they're available in all retail stores near you. <laughs> um, we probably have another five more minutes. Cool. Um, someone asked, what are your favorite musicals? If you're a musical fan. Musical hmm. I think I said it before, but I mean, Phantom of the Opera, like, yeah, I know it's a classic mega musical, but when I was young, I had the cassette tape with Rebecca Crane and Cole Wilkinson, and I listened to it nonstop. So it's what got me into music theater. And now I don't really do it anymore, but (laughs) I did. I've always loved Jesus Christ Superstar, even though not remotely religious or anything but you don't have to be to enjoy Jesus Christ Superstar it's true um, it's an amazing musical um, mm, the first musical I ever saw which propelled my start into acting and performing was Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat mm-hmm. um, but I really am loving the music from Hamilton <laughs> right now plug for <laughs> Hamilton yeah. it's amazing the music is awesome and they want a gajillion Tony so congratulations Hamilton <laughs> yeah. um, and what are your hobbies asked Danny Rifkin <laughs> we have none we, we have, have none actors. <laughs> we are robots <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I like reading. I don't read enough, though. I watch too much TV. I watch so much TV. <laughs> so much. Um, I've decided I'm going to learn how to refinish furniture, so... <laughs> <laughs> future time hobby. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like baking. I like eating. I'll bake you some treats. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I really like eating, too. Oh, <laughs> when, you made that, when you made that comment of, like... I. What was it? You were just like, I, I really like eating all the time? Yeah. Mm. That was me, too. <laughs> I wanted to be like, yes. Yeah. Yes, I feel you. All the time. Okay. Nonstop. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like eating. Yeah. I like baking so that I can eat it. Uh, but I don't really like the baking part. I just want to eat it. <laughs> I really like cycling. I'm yeah. a uh, big cyclist. I mean, I am, too, but I only, <clears throat> it's a means to an end. It's yeah. not like... I personally wouldn't go on a bike ride just for fun. I know, me neither. I, 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 I bike everywhere. And yeah. I do love mm-hmm. it, but yes. I do it so much. Especially that I'm like, when you're wanna... racing past traffic. Oh, you so feel satisfying. Like, ah! Yes, yeah. suckers. <laughs> bike past that <laughs> yeah. taxi driver who's being a butt on the road. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I like cycling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lydia, they want to know if you're making any more singing videos. Um, I was actually thinking, speaking of hobbies I guess Um, because I haven't done one for a while I was thinking of going on Twitter and asking for suggestions for things to write about Uh, so if you guys have suggestions send them at me (laughs) 
<laughs> She'll do that for you. Yeah. Underscore, yeah. <laughs> that, that's um, the one. Caitlin Creek wants to know any advice for a 28 year old who lives in NYC to get into acting? <laughs> I don't know about, like, I mean, <laughs> there's lots of stuff in New York, but I'd look up, like, any kind of theater or film stuff that you can just get involved with. There's lots yeah. of people who um, need actors. Um, just don't let yourself get taken advantage of. Like, you know, I think it. Yeah. there's a lot of people who want to create and they don't have the money to do it, but, you know, be careful about mm-hmm. what you're saying yes to. But um, if you can find a group of people who you enjoy creating with, mm-hmm. um, then you can go off and do that together. Uh, and you don't have to sit waiting by the phone for someone to put you in something Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's lots of fantastic um resources at studios um i follow this um group called the actors green room in new york city and it's run by a casting director so they have all these different workshops Mm -hmm. um acting workshops auditioning workshops casting workshops and then the more involved in the community you get, the more resources you'll be aware of and opportunities you can be made aware of. Yeah. If there's a website that has a bunch of casting calls in New York, we have one here in Canada, mm-hmm. formerly Mandy.com, now Cast a Town. But if there's something like mm-hmm. that where you can go and just kind of see what's happening yeah. and um, try and put yourself out there. And if you don't have acting experience, take some classes, yeah. go see mm-hmm. some plays, um, get inspired some, by some really awesome actors that... You, you really respect and find out where they trained and, and yeah. get some training and then through the training you also meet more people and find more ways to get involved and I'd also say to like try a bunch of different classes because yeah. it's like I know for a while I'd, I'd be like oh I love this person they're really great and they work really well for a lot of people but then like I found someone else and I'm like they're really they're even better like so try a bunch of different places to mm-hmm. find you know what works for you because mm-hmm. everyone's a different type of actor so mm-hmm. okay second last question so Get your final questions in, and we'll pick a very good one for the last one. Um, how did you get involved in web series? My agent <laughs> sent me out in an audition, and then I was in it. <laughs> Is it. Was this your first web series, or were you in other web series before this? I have been in one other web series. It's not available anywhere right now except for France. So if you're in France mm-hmm. and you have a subscription to Canal Play, <laughs> you can check out The Village Green. Um <laughs> Fingers crossed for distribution in the rest of the world after September of this year. (laughs) Um, It's a really, really amazing, actually, um, web series about uh, about a small town in Quebec. I think it's in Quebec, um, where uh, they're running out of money and the the cops and the mayor band together to uh, grow weed and sell weed to make up for the town's deficit instead of turning people out of their homes. Um, And I get to play a gang leader, and that was really fun. Anyway, (laughs) web series are great. (laughs) Um, I also auditioned for Cherrydale back in the day um, for March Family Letters, and then they called me about All for One. And then um, I got an audition for this brand new web series that we're really hoping to get the funding for called Grey, written by RJ Lackey, who also wrote with Sarah uh, as a part of All for One. So he's uh, written and is hoping to produce this other web series based, another adaptation based on Dorian Gray. And we should be finding out about funding within the next few weeks. So who knows? Who knows if that'll happen? Yeah, I went in to audition um, as well, and then I auditioned for Dorothy, um, and then came back in. They asked me to do a tape for Connie, and then they came in to have us do a chemistry read. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I think this, since they've been asking, this kind of has to be our last one. Thoughts? Dorney, Dorlex, can there be an OT3, which is all three together? Can there? I don't <laughs> see why not. <laughs> I don't see why not either. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I feel like Alex might be a little bit nervous at first. 
Okay, so that's a. Th- but I'm mean, not a win for an enthusiastic Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we can have a conversation about it, you know, like. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Season two could be like, you just never know. Yeah. Right, Sarah? <laughs> right? And I'm staying ship impartial. <laughs> ship impartial. Iris might have some ideas for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Shannon is on. Yeah. Hi, oh, Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Shannon. <laughs> um, cool. I don't know how to sign us off. Stop the stream at some point. Okay, okay. This is gonna be awkward because yeah, we'll be yeah. like saying goodbye for a really long time and then <laughs> just awkwardly sitting there. Yeah, and <laughs> smiling. And okay, when pretty. should we start? I was gonna say we should improvise a song. A oh, goodbye do song. It. A goodbye <laughs> song. I go ahead. Okay. If you're the singer of the crew, you you start. I mean, I I put forth the idea, so um. goodbye, 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 goodbye.